and 40 times more protected than without any vaccine. The booster works. As a result, Israel is on course to escape the fourth wave without a lockdown, without further harm to our economy. Israel's economy is growing. Unemployment is going down. I'm glad our actions have inspired other countries to follow with the booster. The third rule, adapt and move quickly. So we formed a national task force that meets every day. I lead it. This task force is intended to bypass slow governmental bureaucracy, make quick decisions, and act on them right away. Trial and error is key. Every day is a new day, with new data and new decisions. When something works, we keep it. When something doesn't, we ditch it and move on. My friends, running a country during a pandemic is not only about health. It's about carefully balancing all aspects of life that are affected by Corona, especially jobs and education. While doctors are an important input, they cannot be the ones running the national initiative. The only person that has a good vantage point of all considerations is the national leader of any given country. Above all, we're doing everything right now in our power to provide our people with tools needed to protect their lives. The ancient Jewish texts, the Talmud, says, whoever saves one life is as if he saved an entire world. And that's what we aspire to do. Distinguished delegates, while Israel strives to do good, we cannot lose sight for one moment of what's happening in our neighborhood. Israel is quite literally surrounded by Hezbollah, Shia militias, Islamic Jihad, and Hamas on our borders. These terror groups seek to dominate the Middle East and spread radical Islam across the world. What do they all have in common? They all want to destroy my country, and they're all backed by Iran. They get their funding from Iran, they get their training from Iran, they get their weapons from Iran. Iran's great goal is crystal clear to anybody who cares to open their eyes. Iran seeks to dominate the region and seeks to do so under a nuclear umbrella. For the past three decades, Iran spread its carnage and destruction around the Middle East, country after country. Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Gaza. What do all these places have in common? Well, they're all falling apart. Their citizens hungry and suffering. Their economies collapsing. Like the Midas touch, Iran's regime has the Mullah touch. Every place Iran touches fails. And if you think Iranian terror is confined to Israel, you're wrong. Let me tell you some news. Just this year, Iran made operational a new deadly terror unit, a startup, swarms of killer UAVs armed with lethal weapons that can attack any place at any time. They plan to blanket the skies of the Middle East with this lethal force. Iran has already used these deadly UAVs called Shahid-136. 
136 to attack Saudi Arabia, American targets in Iraq, civilian ships at sea, most recently killing a Brit and a Romanian. Iran plans to arm its proxies in Yemen, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon with hundreds and later on thousands of these deadly UAVs. So you can ignore it, but experience tells us that what starts in the Middle East doesn't stop there. Distinguished delegates, in 1988, Iran set up a death commission that ordered the mass murder of 5,000 political activists. They were hanged from cranes. The death commission was made up of four people. Ibrahim Raisi, Iran's new president, was one of them. Raisi also oversaw the murder of Iranian children. His nickname is the Butcher of Tehran because that's exactly what he did. He butchered his own people. One of the witnesses of this massacre stated in her testimony that when Raisi would finish a round of murder, he'd throw a party, pocketing the money of those he just executed minutes ago, and then he would sit down to eat cream cakes. He celebrated the murder of his own people by devouring cream cakes. And now this very Raisi is Iran's new president. This is who we're dealing with. Over the past few years, Iran has made a major leap forward in its nuclear R&D, its production capacity, its enrichment. Iran's nuclear weapon program is at a critical point. All red lines have been crossed, inspections ignored, all wishful thinking proven false. Iran is currently violating the IAEA's safeguard agreements, and it's getting away with it. They harass inspectors and sabotage their investigations, and they're getting away with it. They enrich ure uranium to the level of 60%, which is only one step short of weapons-grade material, and they're getting away with it. Evidence which clearly proves Iran's intentions for nuclear weapons in secret sites in Tulkuzabad, Tehran, and Marivan is ignored. Iran's nuclear program has hit a watershed moment, and so has our tolerance. Words do not stop centrifuges from spinning. There are those in the world who seem to view Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons as an inevitable reality, as a done deal, or they've just become tired of hearing about it. Israel doesn't have that privilege. We cannot tire. We will not tire. Israel will not allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. And I want to tell you something. Iran is much weaker, much more vulnerable than it seems. Its economy is sinking. Its regime is rotten, divorced from the younger generation in Iran. Its corrupt government fails to even bring water to large parts of the country. The weaker they are, the more extreme they go. 
to hide their weakness. And I'm telling everyone, if we put our heads to it, if we're serious about stopping it, if we use our resourcefulness, we can prevail. And that's exactly what we're going to do. My friends, not everything is dark in the Middle East. Alongside worrying trends, there are also rays of light. First and foremost, the growing ties Israel is forging with Arab and Muslim countries. Ties that began 42 years ago with Israel's historic peace with Egypt, continued 27 years ago with our peace agreement with Jordan, and even more recently with the Abraham Accords that normalized our relations with the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Morocco. More is to come. At a ripe young age of 73, more and more nations are coming to understand Israel's value and unique place in the world. Well, some friends have stood with us since our founding. The United States of America is a long time trusted friend and ally of Israel, as we saw yet again just a few days ago in Congress. Alongside our old friends, we're gaining new friends in the Middle East and beyond. Last week, this manifested itself with the defeat of the racist, anti-Semitic Durban Conference. This conference was originally meant to be against racism, but over the years turned into a conference of racism against Israel and the Jewish people. The world's had enough of this. I want to thank the 38 countries, 38, who chose truth over lies and skipped the conference. And to those countries who chose to participate in this farce, well, I can only say, attacking Israel doesn't make you morally superior. Fighting the only democracy in the Middle East doesn't make you woke. Adopting cliches about Israel without even bothering to learn the basic facts, well, that's just plain lazy. My friends, every member state in this building has a choice. It's not a political choice. It's a moral one. It's a choice between darkness and light. Darkness that persecutes political prisoners, murders the innocent, abuses women and minorities, and seeks to end the modern world as we know it. Or light that pursues freedom, prosperity, opportunity. Over the past 73 years, the state of Israel the people of Israel have achieved so much in the face of so much. And yet, I can say with full confidence, our best days are ahead of us. Israel is a nation of great hope, a nation that's brought the heritage of the Torah to life in modern day Israel, a nation of an unbreakable spirit. מעט מן האור דוחה הרבה מן החושך. A bit of light dispels much darkness. The lighthouse among the stormy seas stands tall, stands strong, and her light shines brighter than ever. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister, Minister for Community Affairs and Minister for National Judicial Affairs of the State of Israel for the statement just made. And I request protocol to escort His Excellency.